Welcome to Electron Line and in this example as well as the next several videos we're going to show you how to calculate the moment of inertia. Now in this example we're going to illustrate how to use the, the parallel axis theorem and because it's a really handy theorem to, that otherwise without it would be a very difficult problem to solve here. Now notice we have a bar the length of the bar L is equal to three times the radius of each of the uh, what I would call spherical masses that are attached to the bar. Notice that the diameter of the bar is relatively small so we can ignore the fact that it's intruding into the sphere so you can almost assume that these spheres are complete there's nothing, no cutout and so you can assume that the bar is not really making any difference in the moment of inertia of the spheres themselves. This whole contraption will be rotating around like this and so you all know what is the moment of inertia of this interesting contraption. Well, it's going to be the moment of inertia of the bar plus the moment of inertia of the left sphere plus the moment of inertia of the right sphere of it revolving around this axis right here. So really we can say that I total is equal to the moment of inertia of the bar plus two times the moment of inertia of the spheres because the spheres moment of inertia will be identical we just simply have to calculate it for one and then multiply times two because of the symmetry here. Okay, to get the moment of inertia bar that's relatively straightforward. We know that I for the bar is going to be equal to, in the case of it rotating about the center of the bar, is going to be 1 12th the length of the bar times the, oh, let me take that back, it's going to be 1 12th times the mass of the bar times the length squared. It's better to put it in that format like that. And so in this case the length is 3 times R, so this would be equal to 1 12th times the mass times 3r squared and so that would be equal to uh, that would be 9 over 12 mr squared and of course 9 over 12 is the same as 3 quarters so we can say that's equal to 3 fourths mr squared which we could put in the equation right there so i total is going to be equal to 3 quarters mr squared that would be for the moment of inertia of the bar now, what about the moment of inertia of the spheres? Well, normally, the moment of inertia of a sphere, if it's rotating about its center of mass, if it's rotating on its, on its mass, that would be equal to I, about the center mass, which is equal to 2 fifths mr squared. So that's the moment of inertia of a sphere that's rotating about its axis. But notice, that it's not rotating about its axis, it has been moved from this location to this location. And so, using the parallel axis theorem, what we can say is that the moment of inertia of the sphere, as it's set up right here, notice that it's been displaced by this distance, let's call this distance d, which is equal to uh, 3 halves r, because this is 1r, this is 1r, that means that this must be 1r, so this must be 1 and a half times the radius of a sphere, and so we can say that I sub S, which is what's going to go up in here, is going to be equal to I at the center of mass, which is what we know right here, plus the distance squared times the mass of the object, or I should say MD squared, so that's probably a better way to write it. So in this case it would be plus the mass of the object times the distance squared, the displacement quantity squared. So let's go ahead and do that. So in this case, that would be equal to ICM, which is 2 fifths the mass times the radius squared plus the mass of the, of the sphere times the distance of the displacement, which is 3 over 2R quantity squared. Now we have to combine that. So this would be equal to 2 fifths MR squared plus that would be 9 fourths MR squared. So now we have to add 2 fifths to 9 fourths, the common denominator is 20. So this would be equal to, uh, that would be uh, 8 over 20 mr squared plus 4 goes into 25 times, that would be 45 over 20 mr squared. So combine that, that would be 53 over 20 mr squared. So that would be the moment of inertia of a sphere that normally what rotates around its axis with a moment of inertia this, but displaced away from the center by a distance of 3 over 2r, so that means that we're going to add md squared 
two i of the center mass, which would be m times three half r quantity squared, added to the center mass, and we get a total of 53 over 20 m r squared. Now remember, we have two of these spheres, so this would be plus two times, oh, put the two in the wrong place here, two times 53 over 20 times m r squared. Of course, this will cancel out with that, so now we have 53 over 10, and now we have to somehow hmm, combine those two. Notice the common denominator would be 20, so I didn't get any help from that. So I total would be equal to, that would be 4 goes on 25 times, it would be 15 over 20 mr squared plus 10 goes on 20 twice, so that would be 2 times that, or 106 over 20 mr squared. So when we combine that, we get 121 over 20 mr squared, and that's a very sad looking r, mr squared as the total moment of inertia of the bar that has a mass of m and the length of 3r and the two spheres attached to the bar uh, at the center, the center lined up at the edge of the bar, the center lined up at the edge of the bar like that, and so then you go ahead, use the parallel axis theorem, which we have right here, where you take the center mass of a sphere, add to that the mass of the sphere times the displacement of the center mass squared, and then we add that together, multiply times two because we have two of them, add it to the moment of inertia of the bar, and that is the total moment of inertia of the bar and the two spheres put together. Now, of course, if you attach the spheres at the end of the bar, then of course you have a bigger displacement, and then this would be a bigger number, and you can go ahead and work it out like that as well. But in this particular example, that would be the answer, and that's how we do that.